Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Monday Night Football probably will be the biggest game watched, I'm sure, uh, this season. I think it'll be bigger than the Tampa Bay season opener. Maybe I'm crazy and dreaming, but I think it's going to be huge. Um, Monday Night may or may not be the induction for Jimmy Johnson into the ring of honor. Uh, we heard Michael Irving saying that that was going to happen, but then we're hearing that maybe that's premature. You know, Jerry Jones, he loves to put everybody, you know, try and keep everybody guessing and seeing if, you know, he can get as much publicity as possible. But in case he does, I want to play this clip. This is something that I have been, uh, it was an honor to be able to actually do before the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But also, too, not only may or may not Jimmy Johnson be going into the ring of honor, we do know that Drew Pearson is going to be getting his Hall of Fame ring. So um, that may be that they're going to do a double ceremony there with Jimmy Johnson and uh, Drew Pearson. But I want to play this interview. I'm going to be on the road today, but this is... For those of you who don't know about the Dallas Cowboys past, please don't ever say we got five rings without knowing these two guys, as well as learning about all of the Dallas Cowboy greats, from the Bob Lillies and Roger Staubachs to the Randy Whites and the Ed Two Tall Joneses and the Charles Haley's. Understand the history that you have with the Dallas Cowboys. And Jimmy? Take it away. You're up and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> Hi, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted and thoroughly disgusting to watch having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths what was that like and the second part of this question would be I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize which was winning well you know first of all you know you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach, and he – he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuanay, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he is too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. I'll follow up about Charles Haley. 
Yes. He was a character. He was he is a, a character. character but he loop. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came in my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship. And he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs> I should have trademarked that. <laughs> <laughs> James Harris. Man, that was incredible. But, you know, that was really the, the second generation of Dallas Cowboys. You really want to know what football was like. Go back and see some of the highlights back in the days from the 60s and 70s. Football, ooh, that was one hell of a sport. Off, I'd, I'd probably be remiss if I didn't start with the man who's got more Dallas paraphernalia sitting in front of him than anybody I've ever seen. We're going to start with Mark Holmes, uh, and then next we'll come in with uh, Jake Malik will be second. Rich, I uh, appreciate that. Drew, it is great to see you. You know, we just saw you, of course, this past weekend, and I appreciated uh, hanging and spending time with you and Tony and Randy White and things. Um, when I think about the roller coaster ride that you went through, it reminds me of ABC's Wild World of Sports because it was, you know, the, the triumphant victory and the agony of defeat. Seeing when you didn't get in, in front of us, it was just so emotional. And then seeing the joy and the surprise of it this year and yeah. seeing that reflected with all of the fans at this autograph signing show was just amazing. What does it mean to you to be there now with your teammates, you know, with Randy, with Roger and, and Tony Dorsett? It's an embarrassment of riches. And one final part <laughs> of this, right. in the Hail Mary play, did you know you were going to win that game in that huddle? <laughs> Uh, let me do that. Let me go with that one first. Okay. Yes, we felt we we felt we still had a chance. We know we knew even going into that game against the Vikings, it was going to be a tough, tough chore to beat them up there. They were the best team in the conference. That's why we as a wild card team had to go up there and play them. Uh, and it was a knockdown drag out game for throughout the game. So when they scored the touchdown late in the fourth quarter we had about 91 yards to go to get a touchdown to win maybe our confidence you know wasn't as high you know at that point as it turned out to be when we got to midfield uh because we were going against a veteran minnesota viking team and to move the ball against their prevent defense you know we knew it's going to take a, a lot of execution perfect execution in some plays on our part to make that happen but uh, after we got to the 50-yard line, I caught a fourth and 22 pass to get to the mm -hmm. 50. Uh, then we started thinking maybe we got a chance. Uh, but still, you're playing the Vikings. <laughs> you know, they're tough. They're one of the best defenses. They got Paul Krause, the all-time interception leader, Hall of Famer back there at safety. So uh, your confidence is there because, you know, you're competing. But you also know the reality. Uh, <laughs> So we said, let's take some shots in the end zone. And the first shot we took uh, turned out to work, and it became a Hail Mary. And it became a Hail Mary. Now, now joining this uh, Hall of Fame that has a lot of my teammates in it, you know, that makes it even more, more special for me. And even more special, I even have to give myself a pat on the back a little bit uh, to be able to have a career that matches these guys, you know, that – I brought the same thing they brought to the table when we played the Dallas Cowboys. And as much as I counted on them uh, so I can have my success, you know, I feel like uh, my success helped them have their success. So, yeah, I am excited about it. And each and every one of the Hall of Famers that are with, still with us, uh, Cowboy Hall of Famers, has reached out to me and said, you know, welcome to the team. A few of them said it's about time. A couple of them said the team just got better now that you're back on it. So that's pretty cool. Well, thank you very much, and it couldn't happen to a better person. And I'm glad you're not in Huntsville. 
Hey, hey, you know that story, right? <laughs> I know that story. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. You look good in that cowboy stuff, too. Uh, always. Always. All right. Right. Good to see you again. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. We'll go next to Jake, and after Jake will be James Harris. And, um, wow, you know, that I, I just get chills just thinking about the greatness and the embarrassment of riches that the Dallas Cowboys have had. And I'm – very superstitious, okay? Yeah, go figure. I'm a guy with a voodoo doll here. But I believe you reap what you sow. You know, Jerry Jones has had so much success, but I feel like the biggest mistake, and as you get older, you start looking back at everything on your life and you have regrets of things that you have done. And I think that's where we are with Jerry Jones, and he's finally righting that big wrong and bearing the hatchet, and I hope Monday night that we see both of these guys here because anybody can teach you something if your mind is open and receptive to learning. The day you stop learning is the day you die. And when you listen to Jimmy Johnson about how they built the Great Wall of Dallas from a guy who was discarded and Nate Newton from a defensive tackle and Mark Tuane, you know, taking a, a, an undersized guard and making him a center and learning about what made the Dallas Cowboys tick. That wealth of knowledge that was lost because of Jerry Jones's ego, let's make no mistake about it, set this team back. And I believe karma was the reason the Cowboys would always have the craziest bad luck. And maybe, just maybe, this is writing that wrong. And so with that being said, um, I've got to hit the road. But I appreciate you guys being here. Tomorrow we will start our live stream at 1245. We will be covering, of course, the Washington football team, the Giants, as well as all of the games through there. Our stream starts at 1245, and we go through the Sunday night game. It is a watch party. You can get your fantasy updates. You can get news on all of the games that are going on. And you can join us and feel like you're here with us as well. I'm Mark Holmes, and you know what? It's time for me to uh, turn out the lights. Turn out the lights. The party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party is over, and tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again. Yeah.